Good morning, Staples. It's Tuesday, February 23rd, and I'm Miley Fitzpatrick. Welcome back. We put together this show on the Friday before vacation so we could bring it to you today. A couple of weeks before vacation, the Board of Education officially named a replacement for Dr. Landon for the next school year. Her name is Dr. Colleen Palmer. Recently, Holly had the opportunity to meet Dr. Palmer and ask her some questions. Here's Holly's interview. Hi Staples, we are here with Dr. Palmer, who is the new superintendent of Westport School District, and we're going to ask her a couple of questions. So, Dr. Palmer, what do you think the Staples community should know about you? I think uh, the Staples community should know that I am thrilled to be coming on board July 1st. I am excited to be part of this school community. Uh, being part of Weston for uh, the past five years and in Fairfield County for eight, I'm very aware of Westport Public Schools and very impressed with all of the accomplishments and I just look forward to being part of the body of work that is generated here and supporting the students um, in this district. What do you think was your biggest accomplishment from your time at Weston? In Weston I think we focused on many things. We have a similar initiative where you have the Westport uh, 2025 lens for looking at 21st century skills. We have AIM, uh, Academic Innovation and Measurement, which is very similar. We also worked with uh, Columbia Teachers College for a matrix of skills that we think our students should have uh, to be successful when they graduate. So I think there's commonality there. I'm going to come on board and be very familiar uh, with that work that you're doing and hopefully uh, take that forward so all students are global ready. Uh, digital learning has been a major initiative. If we're looking at the world in which our students live today, uh, they live with technology. They, uh, <laughs> Very true. they get up in the morning with technology, they go to bed at night with technology. And how can technology help transform our uh, teaching and learning? so that maybe not all our classes uh, at Staples have to be bounded by the physical walls of the school. What are other ways we can expand learning experiences through technology, connect with other parts of the world, authentic audience uh, uh, feedback, uh, but also just expanding uh, beyond the geographical space of a traditional high school. So I know we've, we've worked on that very much in Weston very proud of our accomplishments and uh, from what I can gather uh, that Westport is also very much immersed in digital learning. Definitely we really are. What made you decide that you wanted to be an educator? Uh, early on in high school I just found I gravitated to helping other students learn and I remember a math teacher at one point in time who uh, thought I would enjoy teaching one of his other classes and asked me to come in uh, during another period and I think I was in an advanced class at that time and I taught Algebra 1 and I just was hooked. I enjoyed it so much and I always found that uh, enabling someone else to see uh, knowledge and, and helping them learn a skill uh, is very rewarding and empowering for the student. Was math your favorite subject in school? I loved math, science. I think I loved all of uh, the, the areas that I studied. I, I, uh, I think I'm a lifelong learner, uh, but math and science were always my area of passion. What do you hope to accomplish at Westport? So in terms of specifics, I, I can say to you that I don't have exact plans. I think it's premature. What I need to do is I need to come in and I need to learn about the district. Uh, at, at a very granular level. I need to talk to students like you. I know we've been emailing back and forth trying to get this interview set up through snow days and I learned a little bit about you. I need to understand uh, the students, the, uh, the staff, our faculty, our administration, our parents, uh, have more conversations to better understand what are those things that we really celebrate here in Westport and what may be areas that uh, some of our stakeholders may say, we really want you to, to focus on. So I think it would be premature for me to come in as the newcomer and just launch a plan. I think what I need to do is listen and learn. And I plan to spend a lot of time in our schools. I love being in classrooms. And I'm always asking students um, what they love about the school they're in, especially high, uh, high school students, mm -hmm. uh, because they know. They know what is working and they know what isn't working and I want to listen to their voices. Sounds like a good plan to me, if there was any. 
why did you decide to come to us for and why now? Uh, this is a unique time. Uh, Dr. Landon has been in the position for 17 years. This job has not been open for a very long time. And when the job came open, it was one of those things where uh, it is such an exciting, dynamic um, educational system that I looked at this uh, as uh, the next step in my uh, professional career in terms of uh, what I think I can bring to the system. And uh, so as I was very, and, I, and I'm still in Weston, obviously, until the end of the school year, I love Weston. They're outstanding teachers. It's an outstanding community. Um, but the attraction to Westport was so great, I felt that if I didn't look at this opportunity, I think I would regret it down the line not to have a chance to serve as part of this team here in Westport. Right. Well, thank you, Dr. Palmer. We hope to hear more from you very soon. We want to wish nothing but success to Dr. Palmer and congratulate Dr. Landon on his retirement. Next, we have two pieces about some special aspects of the Library Media Center. First up, here's a report on their plans for a library maker space. So what we're trying to start in the Staples Library is a maker zone. And the idea of a maker zone, it's usually called a maker space, but we thought because we have zones in the library that we would keep with that zone theme. And the idea is to encourage people to create things. We don't want to limit it to just high-tech items. Anything that you can create is going to be happening in the maker zone. We do have a 3D printer already, and that's something that we'll continue to use, and we hope that people will submit prints using the website. Um, we also have some electronics components that are on order. But we hope to have um, various craft materials. Um, we're hoping to have things for um, origami, um, sewing, and basically anything that the student body is interested in, we want to have. There is a, um, there's a form that I sent by email. So if you watch emails and look on the library website to sign up for, um, if you're interested in teaching something, and then as we schedule the workshops, We'll be sending out more information so that you can sign up, so that we can make sure we have enough materials. We'd like to hear from you, what do you want? So if you can think of anything, however outlandish it is, um, if there's something that we can do, then, then we want to do it. So look on the library website and there'll be um, places where you can um, fill out forms to let us know or just come up and talk to one of us. It looks like there's some great plans. Now, here's a look at our 3D printer. Recently, the Staples Library got a new 3D printer. I talked with Owen to see what it's all about. It's uh, Ultimaker 2, it's a 3D printer that Staples students can print off of. You can practically print anything with this 3D printer. Um, just use your common sense, like you can't print a gun or a knife with this printer. I mean, I think that's pretty obvious why. If you want to request a 3D print, go to www.staples3dprint.weebly.com. That's the site that I made off of Weebly because I'm too lazy to HTML code the whole site. So you go there and there will be a whole list of rules and regulations, FAQs, and a link to the form to submit your 3D print. A lot of people ask me how long their print's going to take and it's usually I'll be able to get it to you in at least a week or two, maybe two weeks at the most. So now you know a bit more about the 3D printer. And, and now, back, back to the host. Almost every year, one of the first pieces we do is on the new freshmen to see how they're acclimating to Staples. Since it's now after February break, we thought we'd do a follow-up to see how their year was going. As it being the middle of the year, we decided to check in with the freshmen to see how their time at Staples has been going. Let's go see how they're doing. How did you think Staples was going to be before you got here? Uh, I thought it would be very confusing and I had trouble finding my class. So Donnie, how did you think Staples was going to be like when you were first coming to the school? Um, I was uh, excited to come to Staples. Uh, I was probably nervous on the first day, couldn't really find any of my classes, uh, but it turned out to be pretty good. 
So what do you think stables was going to be like before you got here? I thought it was going to be pretty hard. I thought it would, there would be like a lot of work. But now I know that there is a lot of work, but there's a lot more time to do it, and I really like that. That's great to hear. Thanks, bud. How did you first think Staples was going to be before you got here? Well, I thought it was going to be I, I you know. <laughs> nothing too, nothing such a big deal, you know? Yeah. I'm just trying to stay educated, homie. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's a vibe. What did you think Staples was going to be like before you got here? I thought it was going to be really hard. Is it really hard? Is it really hard? It's like easier than I expected. So Greg, what were your expectations coming into Staples? Oh, my expectations were nervous, but and I thought it was gonna be hard. Man, I'm just blessed. I was really nervous. Thought it was gonna be a hard day. I thought the tests were gonna be hard, but it's just an easy, easy grind. Before you guys came to Staples, what do you think it was gonna be like? Um, I thought the upper class were gonna bully us. Um, I thought there was gonna be a lot of more work. Um, I thought I was going to stay up really late doing homework. I thought it was going to be more stressful. How did you think Staples was first going to be? Cool. And how is it now? Cool. So, kid, what do you think Staples was going to be like before you got here? I thought Staples was going to be a lot harder with a lot of more work. And after the first quarter, I thought it was a lot easier and I was able to manage. So, Daniel, uh, what were your expectations coming into Staples? I thought it was going to be tougher than middle school. So, uh, what do you think about now? Back to the house. Thanks everyone. It's pretty amazing to realize that before you know it, you'll be sophomores and the class of 2020 will be roaming the hallways. There are a lot of spectacular people here at Staples. Recently, Tyler got the chance to chat with someone who is very special. Hi, my name is Tyler and I have Fabian here with me. How are you doing, Fabian? I'm great. Thanks for having me. That's good. So I can tell that you have a disability. And what is your disability? It's a disability called cerebral palsy. Um, I was affected with a mild case. Okay. Where only the parts in my brain that control my, which is right here, that control my legs, can't work. But there have been other cases that um, they're of cerebral palsy where kids can't um, speak at all. And I was lucky to not have been born with that disability, but I feel as if my disability has taught me to um, respect others with disabilities, mm -hmm. and I feel it's made me a better person. How is it living with this disability? Is it difficult? I mean, it's not as difficult as one would think. I mean, yeah, it kind of is a struggle, but I get through it. Mm -hmm. I roll through it, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, I mean, like, I've, I've had some struggles, but I have friends that support me and a family that loves me. That's what good. more could I ask for? So I hear that your family supports you, so who is your main helper? My mother. Your mother. And do you have any other helpers that help um, through this disability? My brother and my dad, because they usually help pay for the expenses. What are some of the ways that doctors have been helping to try to figure out? Well, um, me and my mother have been recently going to Boston to see a doctor that has been trying to fix this knee because due to my disability the kneecap started to dislocate or deform out of its place so me and my mother are trying to find out why and ways to fix it so far doctors have said no because they think it's it's a wor it's going to be a worse outcome and then i might become like worse later on and then I might not be able to use this leg at all and I'm like like you know the hell with that because like I'm willing to do what's necessary to make me better even if it includes countless surgeries another question that I have is I know that you meant that you mentioned that you have um, some surgeries how many surgeries have you had recently recently I've had one which was back in eighth grade about 2012 okay. I was out for six weeks they did a patella relocation, and my doctor told me that I was that I was tough because in the X-ray before the surgery, he noticed that this knee was cracked. Cracked. Okay. Yeah, and I tend to uh, use my personal analogies and my experiences to help others. That's good. Because I feel like that's what one of my purposes of being in this world is mm. to help others. Because like I'm a guy. I like to put smiles on people's faces. Um, our final question is, 
If you could have anything and you could have one wish, what would it be? To walk. Okay. Thanks, Tyler, and thanks, Fabio. You both make Staples a better place, as does one of our newest teachers. Here's a feature on her. We wanted to go around the school and interview some of the new and leading teachers here at Staples. Here, here's one. Hi, I'm Miss Best, and I am brand new to Staples this year. What classes are you teaching this year? I teach Algebra 2, and I teach Geometry. Where did you teach previously? I taught in California, down in San Diego. What grades did you teach at your old school? 10th and 7th graders. What sets you apart from other teachers? I don't know if it sets me apart from other teachers, but I definitely try to structure the classes so that the students can um, come to the conclusions themselves, that they can figure out um, what's going on without me just telling them. What's your favorite thing about Staples so far? The students, the teachers, the math farm is amazing. I haven't met anyone here that I haven't liked. Thank you, Ms. Best. Now back to the host. Many of you have just gone to counties and red and whites, and you probably spent a lot of money on a gown that you'll likely only wear once. Here's an idea for you and that gown. Hi, I'm Haley Burns, starter and owner of my company, Gown Around. Gown Around is a business where you can bring in your old prom dresses or red and white counties dresses and consign them for a profit. So how it works is you bring in your dress and we negotiate a price around three-fourths of what you originally bought it for. Once somebody buys your dress, you get 60% of the profit. all you guys bring in your dresses and come shop with us for prom. That can also be an idea as you start to think about junior and senior prom. Now let's turn to Jacob and Gabe with sports. Thanks Miley. I'm Jacob. And I'm Gabe. And here's a quick sports update. Since we're taping this 11 days ago, it's impossible to give you an up to the minute report on our teams. But our classes did put together features on two of our teams. First up, a look at one of the newest teams at Staples, the squash team. Hi Staples, we're here to inform you about the Staples varsity squash team. Hi, I'm Mia Christian Murthy and I'm captain of the Staples varsity girls squash team. Hi, I'm Shane Frias and I'm co-captain of the boys varsity squash team. I'm Keon Bruno and I'm co-captain. Squash is a racket sport played by two players in a four-walled court with a small hollow rubber ball. The players must alternate in striking the ball with their racket and hit the ball onto the playable surfaces of the four walls of the court. Why and how did you decide to start a squash team? Well, we're all really passionate about the sport. We've been playing for several years now, and uh, we wanted to bring that passion to Staples. Who have you guys played? We've played teams including Rye, Darien, Greenwich, New Haven, and Hopkins. Do you have a coach? Yes, we've hired the main professional coach at Southport Athletic Club, Attila Og. He works with us part-time. What are your hopes for the squash team in the future? We hope to spread squash to other athletes at Staples High School and to maybe start two JV teams next year and maybe bring it to the middle schools. And we also interviewed some of the players. Hi, I'm Cooper and I'm a player on the Staples Varsity Squash Team. The team is doing really great considering it's our first year as a team and working together. But there's still a lot of room to improve, but we're getting better very quickly. Hi, I'm Emily and I'm a player on the Staples Varsity Squash Team. The Staples Girls Squash Team is a new team. We're all really excited to be a part of it. We've been improving a lot since the first few weeks, and we're working with the coach really hard. We're super excited to get better and improve. Thanks, guys. Hope you learned a little bit about Staples Squash. Now back to the host. Next, here's a report about our boys' hockey team with an up-close and personal look at two very special members of the team. Today we'll be talking to two stars of the hockey team, Zach Bloom, goaltender, Sam New, right winger. I'm here with Sam New, Staples Hockey, sophomore number 19, right winger. Sam, how's the team looking this year? Uh, we're looking pretty good. We've had some pretty good performances this year. Beat our rival, uh, West Hill Stanford, last Saturday, so that was fun. Great. 
Uh, how does the offense look to thrive coming up on the playoffs? And uh, you know, who are the league scores in the team are going to carry uh, the Staples to the playoffs? Um, the offense is looking pretty good. I mean, we that's what we really live off of, our offense. And uh, we're doing a pretty good job. We have top scorer Jesse Greenspun uh, this year. He's doing pretty good. And Ryan Johnson from over in Weston. So those guys are really fun to play with, and they, they keep the game interesting. Great. What's your best memory playing Staples hockey? Uh, best memory playing Staples hockey was probably beating Barlow in the uh, quarterfinals last year, or yeah, the first round of uh, states, and just winning them was off. Winning against them was an awesome feeling. Great to hear from Sam New. Yeah. I'm here with sophomore goalie Zach Bloom. How's it going, Zach? So, uh, what have you done in the offseason to improve your game? The uh, whole team worked together this offseason. Uh, we all did weight conditioning together, and to improve my individual game, I worked with goalie coaches and did camps with other players. How does the team look to thrive in the playoffs? The uh, team looks to thrive in the playoffs by not putting too much pressure on ourselves. Uh, just keep doing what we're doing, working hard in practice, and uh, seeing as far as we can go in the playoffs, hoping to get that state championship this year everyone wants. Great. Let's bring it back to the host. Before we close off the sports report, we want to make note of a special performance by a Staples legend. In Boston, the last week of January, Staples 2013 graduate Henry Wynn broke a four-minute mile with a time of three minutes, 58.74 seconds. His time cut six seconds off of his best time at Staples of four minutes and five seconds. What makes Henry's time all the more remarkable is that in the middle of the race, a runner fell in front of him and Henry had to hurdle over him. Henry's time is the second fastest in University of Virginia history. Congratulations, Henry. That's all for sports. Let's throw it back to Miley. Thanks, guys. There are many people who don't feel comfortable cooking. And for those, Agnes and Johanna are putting together a series of videos that show that it's not so hard to make something delicious. Here's their first example. Yum. Tomorrow, there will be a special homeroom to discuss the upcoming lockdown drill. Then, on Thursday, the Period 2 class will be back with a brand new show. We won't have shows next week because of testing. Because, believe it or not, next Tuesday is March already. But we will be back in two weeks with our next show. Good morning, Staples.